Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 194 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to make a paintbrush holder. Now earlier in the series we did make a paintbrush and pen holder and this was the one. And although everyone thought it was nice, um, I did have a lot of people say it was a little too fiddly for them to make. And so now I can use this one to add more pencils and pens to um, and take my paintbrushes out of here and put them in my new paintbrush holder and that's what I'm going to do but this one is super simple so we got this um, ice cube tray and I saw on Pinterest where they had these really long ice cube trays to make really like long sticks of ice and somebody had stuck their paintbrushes in them and they painted it up to make it look nice and it's like that's a good idea but first off I'm not going out and secondly um, I figured those would be more expensive than a dollar, so why not use the ones we got at the Dollar Tree? So, um, but, and they have this squishy bottom, which means it's not hard plastic, and I'm not going to, if it was all hard plastic, you could still do this, but it would be much harder to do with your knife and, um, you know, maybe a little more dangerous. So always be careful with your knife. But what we're going to do is we're just going to cut these off. And they're very easy. Just extend your knife out a ways. And again, whenever you're using a knife, always point it away from you. And always be very careful. But I'm just going to just come across. And it just slices through so easily. Be careful when you get to the end. And there we go. It's gone. Now, I was thinking, well, I'm not going to be able to use these for a mold anymore. I bought these um, when we bought our plaster and we were making little cabochon molds out of them. But the thing is, is that you can still use them as a mold. You just put your plaster in there and you don't have to deal with all the extra area. Put your plaster in there, let it dry, and boop, pop it out. So keep them. They still make a great mold. And now we have two things out of one. And when you get to the middle... You just do the same thing um, and if you extend your knife out far enough because you have the one in the middle here you just cut out the outside one and then you just extend your knife out and it's still just as easy to just cut right across the top of there even though it's in the middle and again just very carefully and point it away from you just slice right across it and there we go now if you wind up getting off a little bit and you've got you know you say well you know like I got off right there and I don't want that you know I need to get a piece of that off just go back in and just slice it off and there you go so now we have the basis for our um, what do you call it? Paintbrush holder. And how simple was that? You know, and yes, I did already cut off a whole bunch of them, but I just did three in what? A couple minutes. So um, it doesn't take long at all to get this one all prepared. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use any kind of a box, cereal box or whatever you have. I just had this spaghetti box, um, you know, which was a little bit sturdy. And... But, you know, if you use a cereal box or anything, that will work, too. Because if you decorate it up with, you know, glue some tissue paper on it or some construction paper or something, everything that you put on it is just going to make it that much more solid. So I'm going to take off one set of the flaps for my top portion. And then we're going to just kind of bend it to the right size. Actually, my the box for my iron is exactly the right size, but I use um I always store my tools and stuff in their original boxes. It just makes it easier to store them because you can stack them on top of each other. So I didn't want to use that box, but it was the perfect size. All right, so now what we're going to do, and I've got some holes here and everything. That doesn't matter because once I decorate it up with some you know, tissue paper or whatever I decide to decorate it with, um, you're not going to see those holes. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to decide how tall I want it. And because this box was really the right size, I like this height. Take a, take a, 
you know, a paintbrush and stick it in there. This is going to fit inside, so it's pretty much still going to stick up that far. You want to make sure that if you have any short paint brushes, they're not going to fall all the way in. So you don't want to make it too tall. <coughs> um, excuse me. So this is going to be just a touch too long, but it's also not wide enough. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find out. I'm just going to hold this up underneath here. And there's kind of a little ledge in there. Well, there's, that might fit my, there is, there's a ledge in there that the cardboard will fit into. So that's really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, if I start here, start at one edge, one side, and then I'm going to come over like this. So I'm going to want to bend it right about here. So, I don't have my, I should have had my ruler here, but I'll just do it by hand. Get this knife closed and out of the way. And let's see if that's going to fit. So if this one started here, and I kind of roll it out around there. That looks like that's going to fit there very nicely, just like that. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of gonna round this out a little bit so that it will actually kind of fit down in there. Just kind of work it a little bit to get it a little bit soft. So as you want to go around that corner, it does it without biting you. But you've got all this in the way. And trying to stay under the tripod doesn't make it any easier. I hope I was under the tripod. All right, so that's going to fit in there. Like that. So I'm going to come down here. And how far do I need to go? All right, that's fitting in there fairly nicely. My rounded part is going to be right here. So now I'm just going to manipulate that. I'm going to fold it at that point a little bit, like that. And then, sorry for being right in your face, just kind of work it around my finger, just kind of round that corner. And the bottom flap, we don't need to worry about because we're going to just fold those under and glue them together. So that part doesn't need to be rounded. Just the part that's going to be the up and down sides of your... Okay, so now we're rounded here and here. We're going to try that in there. I'm even going to kind of like loosen this a little bit. And like I said, I'm and I'm doing it in a, in a hurry. So, you know, you can be a little bit more gentle with it and get it really nicely rounded. Okay, so that's going to fit right in there. Well, that was just a bonus that it has that lip on it, though, because that will just hold it all together even better. Okay, so that one's there. And... Round it around that corner. Now this one, my rounded part, is going to need to be right here. Oops, right here. So I'm going to fold it right there. And I'll just kind of work on that just a little bit right in that area to make it so that it'll go around the corner. Again, I don't need to worry so much about the flat part, just the up and down part. The flat part's going to be cut off in, in different places. Just want to soften that cardboard up. It doesn't need to be anything super perfect. If you had a ruler, it would help you bend that better. But we don't have one. 
you can just kind of roll that a little bit like that. Okay, now I'm going to cut this piece off because it's in my way. Or at least maybe cut it like that. So I'll be able to... Yeah, I'm just going to cut it just on the upward part just so that I can go around that corner. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just kind of cut up to where I have it rounded. It won't hurt to take it off. I'm going to take it off. It's in my way. Alrighty, so now we've got it this far. And we might be a little bit short. We'll find out. If we are, we'll just add a piece of cardboard on there. Okay, so got the whole thing rounded out. Let's see if it's going to fit. And if it does fit, I'm going to put some glue in there. Now, if you're putting this to the outside, you would want to sand it first so that you could paint it and glue to it and not have a problem with the paint sticking. I'm going to put it on the inside so it's not as noticeable. Um, you know, it all just depends. For me, things like storage Sometimes I'm picky about decorating them, and sometimes I'm not. I need storage that works, and I'm not a huge one on the whole decorating process, so I don't always decorate everything. But at least if I put the cardboard part to the outside, at least on the from the outside, I can decorate it, but you'll still see the blue on the inside if you look down. Once it's full of paint brushes, I don't think that's going to be much of a difference. I'm just kind of fitting it in just to test fit and see if it's going to see if it's going to fit. Whoops, pull out this end. Okay, so that does fit. And that fits and I do have enough with this little flap right here to just kind of round that a little bit and fit it into that corner just kind of loosen it up And no matter what the other side looks like, which is going to be the outside, it'll be okay because we'll cover it with some tissue paper or some fabric or whatever we feel like covering it with. Paper. Our own painty papers. I'm going to try just taking a pen. Just kind of give that a little bit of a roll right there. and it's kind of squishing it down to at the same time. I'm gonna do the same thing here on this corner, just kind of hold that pin in there. I need to take the lid off. I'm gonna put it in there, just kind of roll it a little bit back and forth. We need the rounded edges on it. Now, if you're um, ice cube tray holder is more square, you wouldn't have to round these corners. And if you wanted to, even on this one, you don't have to round the corners. You can just make your box square to fit underneath and glue it in there. And our last corner is right here. Sorry for the shaking. There. Okay. Now what we're going to do is put some glue in here. Now because this is plastic, the, um, I don't want to, mm, I don't want to put the glue in there yet. 
because I want to put a little bit of the, the um, shelf liner that we have on the bottom. And it's not going to matter if it's totally, you know, like if it gets wrinkled or if it's perfectly straight or whatever. Um, because this is just to hold your paintbrushes from slipping and sliding sideways. I hate it when that happens. I like them to stand up nice and straight. This is going to go on the bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is get rid of that piece that I didn't get rid of earlier. This one's going to fit right to there. So I am just going to glue these together like that and then get that bottom piece in there and cut this corner right here because you can see that our rounded part is there. So we need to just cut some of that off. All right, we're going to glue it together. And then I'll start putting it in the thing right away so that um, I'll be able to move it a little bit before the glue completely dries. Okay. Now, you can also, and I'll probably wind up doing it afterwards, cutting a, a solid piece to put underneath. Yeah, I could have cut a solid piece to fit down inside here, but I didn't. So I will put a solid piece underneath after I get it all put together. And that will also make it more sturdy. Alrighty, and I'm just going to use a brush and spread that around a little bit. Leaving it kind of thick because I want it to kind of come up through my, um, come up through the covering we're putting on the bottom, the shelf liner, to give it a better grab. Okay, I'm just going to take this. Drop it down in there. Okay, now it's coming up both sides, and I really don't want it to do that because the ones on the edge, I don't want to catch it all the time and start pushing it down and making a big lump, so. Because it was coming way up both sides. So I'll cut it right about here. And there we go. Now that's going to stop our paintbrushes from sliding so much. And now we're going to try this because this is plastic. You might want to use your super glue. It may hold it better than the than this glue will. Um, because I've got the little lip down there, I'm kind of hoping that that holds it along with the glue. And if it doesn't, no big deal. I go back in later and put some super glue on it. So I'm just going to start at one end. Kind of push it down there a little bit. Now, on the ends, it doesn't look like there's really a, actually a groove, just on the sides. And putting this in didn't help because I'm just pushing on it. Okay, I need to get back up to this corner. Then get down into this groove. And as you're doing this, if part of your box is on the outside of the of the tray that's going to hold it up so you got to kind of make sure that you get that pulled in as you're going around I'm 
this up so I can see. I'm getting glue all over myself. It doesn't hurt a thing. Getting glue on my hands. When we were kids, we used to put glue on our hands, spread it out really flat, and let it dry. And then you'd peel it off, and then you'd see all the lines in your hand. Okay, that looks like I think... That looks like I have it pretty good. I think it's in pretty much all of the areas. It's not really rounded much on the end, but I'm going to say that's okay because I don't really feel... Yeah, there's not quite a lip on the end like there is on both sides. So the sides are where I really want to concentrate. There we go. Please, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this on here. Give it a good press. It's kind of sticky now because it's been a minute. And then I'm just going to fold that in. I'm going to fold this in. And I'm going to flip the whole thing over, leaving the other flaps out. I'm going to push that down. There we go. And if I can get this in here. Nope, that one doesn't fit. Well, this end will fit. I'm just going to push that down on the glue. Now, we could have done that first and then put this on top, but because I really wanted to work at getting then getting into those ridges I wanted it upside down I wanted to be able to go in from the other side um, and I knew that I would have to fiddle with this a little bit but that it wouldn't be any big deal okay so then we've got that done I'm gonna take these and fold them in I've got glue all over here because originally I had them glued on the other side so I'm gonna put some glue here And here, here, and here, and then fold those in and tip it back over. Because I have my plastic tablecloth, I'm not hurting anything, and it's not going to um, stick and not come off. So I'm just going to push them down. Like that. And over there. And then just go through and you know it until this dries just a little bit because I put a lot of glue on there and it's a very wet glue so it's going to take a few minutes for that to get tacky enough to grab and hold it down so I will just do this every few minutes or so I'm not going to do it the whole time I'll let that glue get a little tacky and then I'll come back and just press that down and then once it gets tacked in place and dries a little bit, I will flip, I will put a piece of cardboard underneath, trace around it, and cut out a piece of cardboard to put on the bottom. But what I'm going to do right this second is make sure that I've got the whole thing in there where I want it. I can see the cardboard along the edge here. So that's a good thing. And I'm going to set a book on top of this right now. And um, then I'll come lift it off and press those bottoms down because I want them to get glued together. And um, and then I'm going to let this dry for a while before I mess with um, doing the decorating part because I want it to be dry. So I will be back when it's drier than it is now. 
and we'll put some decoration on it. And like I said, see how you can see the blue inside? Um, you know, if you didn't want to have that there, you could sand that off and paint it before you put it together. But this really, I mean, I made it look kind of fiddly trying to go around the edges. I could have just pushed it in there and just come across and push it in there. I just wanted to have those little bit of rounded edges on there. You don't have to do it like that. You can have square edges. And even at that, it hasn't really taken that long to get to this point. And other than letting it dry and decorating it, it's done. You could use it just like this as soon as it's dry. So... I will be back in just a minute and you know we'll decide what to put on the outside of it okay I am back and I let the bottom dry and I cut I cut around I put a piece of cardboard underneath this traced around it and cut it out and then I glued it on the bottom I did want to show you that I put my markers in here to hold those flaps down onto the new piece of cardboard bottom that I cut out um, and, you know, I used it to kind of push everything down pretty well. And then I just put those on there, put a heavy book on top, and the whole thing has set now overnight so that um, it could really get dry, nice and dry, before we went any further. So, um, but there's the piece of cardboard that I cut out and put on the bottom. It, I did get it off a little bit here, but it is what it is. We can't change that now, so... I'm just going to cut out that little piece of fabric, and I am going to see about cutting this off so we don't have that lip there. But that's just because we had the hole in the bottom, and we wanted to we want it to be nice and sturdy. And then what I've done is I've just cut out um, the last of my tissue paper, my colored tissue paper. I also cut out some of the games in the newspaper and the funnies in the newspaper because I want to put a covering of newspaper on it first and that way it will make it stronger it'll cover the holes and I like to use like the funnies in the games because um, I know there's not going to be anything that I'm going to see through my tissue paper that's going to bother me so um and then I'm just going to use water glue, which is just two parts PVA glue, um, which for me it's the, the white school glue from the Dollar Tree. And um, Elmer's glue is PVA glue. Um, it's just plain old white glue. And, it, and it's two parts glue to one part water is how I make my water glue. And I use this in the same way that I would use um, I'm gonna put this one this way. Um, I use it the same way that I would use uh, Mod Podge. But to me it's cheaper and I also like the fact that when it dries it um, it isn't sticky. And so that you know that makes a big difference to me because I hate that you know, like I'll do something and I cover it with Mod Podge and then, especially if it's in a book, then later on um, it's all dry and I close the book and the pages stick together. So, and I do know that Mod Podge now has what they call like a paper Mod Podge or something like that that's supposed to not be sticky. I've never tried it um, just because I've always done this. Not only do I not like that that's sticky and this is not, um, also the fact that this is a whole lot cheaper. And so, to me, it's a win-win situation. And I almost always have Elmer's glue on hand. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I buy it by the gallon. Um, and so, I know that I'm going to have it if I need it. All I need is a... a bowl that seals tight and I'm good to go just put in two parts water and or two parts glue to one part water and mix it up and whatever you have left over just close your container and you can use it another time now you could do if your if your cardboard this cardboard is not super thin. If it was um, like a cereal box, it might be a little bit thin. 
and um, so then I might put two coats of newspaper on before I put my tissue paper and even your tissue paper once you put glue on it like this even that sturdies things up more than you would know so um, this just makes a really big difference on making something that will stay solid for quite a while and I cover a whole lot of my storage units with the newspaper and then the tissue paper just because it um it makes them so much sturdier put some glue there and then just fold that down I want to just go up to my plastic edging I don't really feel like going over it but you can do it however you would like to And because I kind of rushed through this a little bit, um, when I put it together, it's not perfectly square. It's not kind of, doesn't really have the rounded end on it what, the way that I wanted it to, even though it does kind of have a rounded end on it, but the two ends are different. Um, you know, so if you take your time, it's not going to be quite as misshapen as mine. But even though it's misshapen, it is still going to work very well to hold my paintbrushes. So that I am very happy about. I don't know if I have any glue up there, so I'm going to put more up there. I'm going to fold it over the edges because I do want to do the bottom also just to keep the whole thing kind of one solid piece. And we're already back to the beginning. Stick this one here and then go around the bottom too. And I always put it underneath and on top because it, even the newspaper is what's making this solid, but also the glue itself is what's making it solid. So every bit that you're putting on here is just making it sturdier and sturdier. And then, just put some across the bottom. If I really, really wanted this to be in better shape, I could always um, fill it in with a little bit of newspaper here where it sticks out further and then it kind of comes in. I could put a little bit extra newspaper right there to make it all exactly the same, to make it look more square um, to me. It, that doesn't is not going to make a difference to me. It's misshapen. We're going to just say it's organically shaped. There we go. I, I love the organic look of things that are not perfectly symmetrical. <laughs> That's not true. But, but I really don't mind that it is not a perfect shape. What matters to me is if it's going to work or not. And after I started putting it together, I was very happy with the way that I think it's going to work. And I just work on my plastic tablecloth and I really, so long as I'm continuing to move it, I really don't worry too much about it sticking. Um, if you are going to stop and start in that type of thing you'll want to move it onto a piece of parchment paper or you know it will stick to your plastic tablecloth um, as you know if it starts to dry and I apologize about it being so close but it just has to do with how tall it is and so there we go now we have the whole thing covered with the newspaper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start putting on some of the tissue paper. Now the tissue paper is a little more delicate. So if I were to flip this over onto the table, it might stick a little bit. 
So I'll just have to kind of keep that in mind. And my hands are covered with glue, so my hands are sticking to the tissue paper. But I'm just going to go around and just randomly put it on there. It doesn't need to be any specific way or in any kind of a color order. I just like to try and make it so that my colors don't touch each other. Like red there and red there and green there and green there, but not like green and green. Okay, I'm gonna give that a coat. Just like that. And if I have a spot where it's kind of ripped and I don't like the looks of it because the, the gray newspaper is showing through, then um, I just take a little piece of that same color tissue paper and stick it on there. I left these long so they're going to be able to just wrap around however far they go, which is pretty far, surprisingly, and it keeps sticking to me. I'll use my brush to press it down. And I this is one thing where I do not worry about the wrinkles. I really do like the wrinkles on here. You can put it on more carefully, um, but I do like the looks of, of the wrinkles on the tissue paper. Sometimes I even um, purposefully make it, you know, I'll crinkle it all up before I even stick it on there and then stick extra glue on it to hold it down. But I, I do like the way that that looks. Because it kind of, if you get it super smooth, if everything that's underneath there is also super smooth and, you know, nice and flat and that type of thing, that's great. But if what's underneath there has any blemishes in it, if you leave the wrinkles, if you're putting on tissue paper or napkins or anything, if you leave a bit of the wrinkle in there, those blemishes from underneath, they don't show. Not like if not like if you had made your tissue paper perfectly smooth. If you had a big dent in your box or something, then that dent would, would show up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to finish this up, which we're almost finished already anyways. I'm all the way to the other side. And, um, and I will grab what we're going to need for tomorrow. I'm going to finish it up and I need to go around the bottom edges here and then I'm going to let it dry a bit so that we can put the brushes in it and see what the whole thing is going to work like. So I will be back with the box so you can see what it looks like filled and show you what we need for next week. See right there I've got a, a chunk of newspaper so I'm just going to Put a little bit more glue on there, get that off, and get that covered up, just like that. There we go. All right, I'll be back in just a minute after this is all dry. I am back. It is finally complete, and this is what it looks like. It holds all of my brushes. It works really well. I do really like it, and that leaves me room to put like my colored pencils or something, or more markers into my older, um, into my older one. And this one really was easy. I made it look a little hard trying to round the corners and everything. I could have just done a square box that would have fit underneath of there. It would have been much quicker and it really was very simple. So I hope that if you need a paintbrush holder that this helps you and gives you an idea. For next week what we're going to need, these are foam counting blocks and they're just little foam blocks from the Dollar Tree. And so this is what we will need for next week. And thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.